Hey, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be doing a unboxing and review of the Luminary Nendroid. I just got this from Tokyo Otaku Mode. It is the first Nendroid figure for the Dragon Quest series. They just made this one and it's pretty cool. So yeah, I ordered this as soon as I could. Uh, I pre-ordered it. So let's just open this up and take a look at it. So as you can see, we have the Tokyo Otaku Mode little folder there and of course this is the packaging this is what the folder looks like it has just the information in it it's very nice and yeah so we're gonna take out this paper that was used as padding and get this out okay and there's the luminary nendroid and it has a bunch of bubble wrap around it all right, so we'll set that down and put this aside. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's see, this is the Luminary Nendroid, and, well, we're gonna need to get this out of the bubble wrap first, so I'm just gonna make a quick cut here. Take that off. We can get a good look at the box. And there it is. This this is the box for the Luminary's Nendroid, and you can see him pretty clearly through the window there. It says the Luminary Nendroid number 1285. That's that's how many figures they've made so far. It's quite a bit. So yeah, it looks nice. Now I have a few of these other, a few other Nendroids too besides this, but yeah, this one is definitely a nice one to have. And this is the side of the box, as you can see. We have the back of the box and the other side. Doesn't look too different. So yeah, the Luminary. It's interesting that they use the. Yeah, North American localized name for this product. They didn't call him a Yusha or anything, even though it's a Japanese figure. So as we can see, here is a close-up pen of the box side, and we'll be doing the back as well. So this is what the side looks like up close. There's a lot of pictures of him in different poses. And here's the back. All right, so we're gonna have to get this thing open, I guess. So let's turn this around. You can tell it's authentic based on the uh, sticker seal up here, the holographic sticker. That tells you that it's not a bootleg. And also if the circle seal on the back is round, that's also an indicator that's authentic. Now we're gonna be cutting this, this seal very carefully. Don't wanna mess up the box, of course, because this, this is a collector's item even though we're taking it out to look at. Okay, so very carefully and... Looks like that wasn't enough. So I'm gonna very slowly push the, the sides open. Actually, we'll, open, we'll cut it open a little more. Okay, so I'm gonna very slowly pull this aside and try to get this out. Because if you do it too quickly, you might accidentally dent the box. Don't wanna do that. All right, it's almost open. There we go. Okay, so we have the box open now. And it's just a matter of taking it out. So we're gonna take a look at what's inside the box. So we'll just open this flap here and there he is. So if we try pulling him out, it looks like it's stuck a little bit. His his stand is stuck to the box. It looks like it might be taped on there. I don't know why they did that. It's okay, I'll try to get him out. Let's just, uh, 
Yes, it's a little bit of a complication, but it should be fine. It's taped to the inside of the plastic and it's taped to the inside of the box, it looks like. Now let's put that back in and pull it out like this. There we go. Yeah, it's stuck in there. All right, I'll just take it off and just unpeel that. Looks like it came out all right, no damage to the box. And yeah, so we got everything out safely. Just put that to the side. You can take a look, there's the luminaries, uh, the uh, Dragon Quest symbol on the inside, the Ramya symbol on the inside of the box. It's all blue on the inside. Looks very cool. And yeah, there's not much more else to it. So there's some instructions in there as well, but uh, we got that out as well. So I'll put that, I'll put that off to the side. Okay, so these are the instructions right here. It has all the, well not really instructions, just more like part list. It tells you how to take off his face plates and how to use his accessories, things like that. There's different languages. It's just a nice little thing. We're not gonna take it. We're not gonna take too long on this. So I'll put that off to the side and all right, so here is the luminary and all of his accessories. He comes with a lot of accessories in one faceplate. Comes with two swords, a sheath, even an extra leg and a shield. So we're gonna take this off. Okay, put that off to the side. And there's the luminary and it's wrapped in plastic. We'll just take that off. I, wanna, I usually keep the, these you know, you don't want to throw them out all the time because you might want to put them away in the box one day. So, uh, yeah, I'll just set them off to the side and we'll take all, we'll take everything out of the box before we take a closer look at everything. So first we're going to, I'm just going to uh, unload everything. So we have his first faceplate. He's got like this sideways view. Uh, yeah. All right. We have next is the leg. This is an extra leg, I guess, for an action pose. Put that off to the side. Next is the wave, the slash effect. It's pretty heavy, actually. It's uh, feels all right. We'll, we'll look at everything a little bit closer soon. So there's a shield. Put that off to the side. We've got a sword here. Just gonna get that out. It's pretty stuck in there, but okay, there we go. Sword of Light, the cobblestone sword, and his sword sheath first back. That off to the side, and we got this little slime buddy here. We're gonna try to get him out, so. Looks like there's a piece of plastic over him, keeping him in place. Just peel that off slowly, and we can get the slime out. There we go. And there he is, the slime. Okay, so we got everything out. That that should be everything. Set that off to the side. And here is the luminary's head, because I took the head off. Just we're gonna look at each piece first before we start. Before we get into it. So I took the head off. That's the head sculpt. It looks very nice, very detailed actually. It looks a lot like his in-game model, even though it's a chibi figure. I'm actually impressed with this. This looks nice. And uh, next we have his torso with his arms, and this is well sculpted as well. This is the Luminary's torso, and he's got that sash for his sword. Next is his sort of skirt piece, or his, uh, his coat, his coat front with his bag and his belt. And this is another piece that you gotta put over his legs. And the next piece is his legs, of course, with the back, the coattails. And he's got a lot of articulation in the legs. And they spin, they sort of have a, a lot of, they have a lot of motion. They even have a bend, like a bend in the, the knee kind of, you know. All right, and then the next thing is the sword sheath. It has a peg hole in the back for putting into the loomer's back. And of course, these handle pops out the handle pops out i guess you might need a it for a pose where you're not holding the sword or he is holding the sword you can alternate and 
and we've got another joint neck joint i guess this is, a, this is like a spare neck joint in case you lose yours or if you break it or something for his neck and this is the cobblestone sword this is the the full sword that he would be holding in his hand and uh you may be wondering does the sword fit into the sheath well let's try it out it's it doesn't actually fit in it's it's just for show that sheath that you can't actually you can't stick the sword into it so that's uh it's not disappointing but it's uh just something to keep in mind and the next item is that slash effect that you use with the sword and this looks very detailed it's very clear it's like transparent at the end and it feels very nice actually it's very smooth so the second sword that we have is a sword of light and it's very detailed it looks a lot like the game model it's a lot better than i expected from an android honestly it looks really nice and then after that we have the shield the shield of erdrick or the erdwin shield and it has a little ball joint handle and that looks good too so the the second face play we have is a sort of smug looking sideways viewing face and you're gonna want to use that with the luminaries body you can swap it out just to give a different expression essentially so yeah they i always like it when they add a second face face play to the figure you know and this this one definitely looks nice it looks like the luminary it has his face his eyebrows and it, it just looks like him a lot so that's a nice nice face plate now the next thing is the leg. Now the leg is for action poses, I guess. It's not something I would really use a lot, but it's there for people who want to pose in different action sort of sequence sequence poses. Uh, after that, we have this slime buddy, and this actually feels very nice. It feels very thick, unlike the Bring Arts figure to slime. And it, just take a closer look at it. It looks really nice. Like he's got the little smile, and the shading is really nice. It's darker at the top, and it's lighter at the bottom. And uh, I just like the slime overall. It's a it's a nice little slime that good smile made. See, I don't have any problems with this at all. And yeah, like he's not hollow. It's pretty thick uh, plastic. It's pretty solid feeling. So yeah. The next item is the stand the peg hole stand thing for the, for his back essentially you'll, pl you'll plug it into the stand and the other part will plug into his back so that he could stand up because he's not he's very top heavy so he won't be able to stand up on his own no matter how much you try so we have here is the luminaries extra arms and extra hand pieces this is very necessary if you want to pose him holding the sword in different kinds of poses because he doesn't have articulation in the elbows so you got to swap out these arms and you got the stand there and a uh, little more pieces that came with the stand just extended so here's luminary's serious face and we're gonna put the, put the ninja together so we're gonna get all the pieces and we're gonna assemble him even though he was assembled before so what we have here is a face plate uh the skirt part the legs the sword sheath and i'll show you all how how to put it together so the first things first, you want to get the head in there. So it's a bit of a tight fit. You're gonna really want to shimmy it in there and uh, don't force it, but it, it'll it, it'll fit in well. So we're gonna try to pop it in there and there. Now, now I vent. All right, this should be it. And there you go. You heard the pop. So with that, we are now onto the legs. You're gonna want to take the the front of the coat and put it over the leg with the peg hole going through there and we just put that on like that and it's that easy so there we go there's there's his body all, all put together and that's the nendroid luminary it's a very nice looking ninja it's one of the best nendroids i've seen it's definitely uh one worth getting so and of course, as you can see, he doesn't stand up on his own. He's not going to stand up on his own. He's got a giant head. It's not going to work out. So he's got the second faceplate as well. Uh, we'll we'll see, uh, look at that in a second. First, I'm going to show you this, the sword sheath. So as I told you before, it has a peg hole in the back. 
and ba basically what you're gonna want to do with this is you're going to want to you're gonna want to uh, use the actual stand itself to plug the peg hole into his back and keep it secured you actually need you need to do that you need to he needs to be on the stand in order to be using in order to be using the sheath of his sword so I'll show you how to do that in a second so yeah so it's it's kind of hard to position a sword like this on his back especially since his head is so big but it does work at a certain angle it's not going to be directly up because his head will be in the way, but you, you can you can get it in there and it'll look fine. So as you can see, got it in there with the peg hole. And obviously you're going to want to use a stand now. So that's how it looks. That's how it should look, at least. So this part of it goes into his back. And keeps the sword nice and snug. And of course, you have a lot of articulation with the stand. And we're gonna plug that in to the stand. Of course, and not, no, you don't plug it into there. You plug it in the other side, actually. Because the other side has the holes. Uh, yeah, so we plug it into here, and you can plug it into any part of the stand you want. Well, there he is. So he's standing on his own. Kind of. And he looks very nice. Look at that sculpt. He looks just like a miniature version of the Luminary. All the back and all the belt buckles and straps and everything it just looks so good so just gonna show you a 360 view of him standing up on his own now the thing about his arm is that the arm doesn't have a lot of articulation so you're gonna need to use different kind of arm pieces to make different poses like his arm stretching outwards you're gonna need to get another shoulder piece for that and these things pop out and you can mix and match the arm shoulder and hand pieces so for example this arm i'm holding in my hand is one that you use if his arm is outstretched and holding a sword like like slashing a sword kind of this one that he's already got plugged in that's that's for having his arm downwards this one on the other hand as you can see is has his hand outwards like this so you can hold be holding a sword you know and like I said, you can mix and match and them to, like like this. So if you want, you know, different kinds of combinations, like his arm downwards with open hand, you could swap the hand, or you want a slight bend in the arm, you could do that too. And we're gonna put in his sword of light in his hand and see how that looks. So just as soon as I get that in there, and it looks like he can hold it pretty well. It's a it's a good fit. It's not like the bring arts. The bring arts was a little bit rougher with the sword. So there's the luminary holding his sword of light, and he looks really good with it. Now, this is the luminary with weapon, of course. And like I said, there's different ways to pose them, but this is just a very basic pose, just to show you what it looks like. Yeah. So, like I said, there's different kinds of arms. I'll show you another arm, how it looks. So I'm gonna pop that shoulder part out and show you a more bent looking arm. So just as much as soon as I can get that out there, okay. So this is a, a bent looking, kind of a bent arm with a open hand to hold a sword. If you want a different type of pose only get it in there okay there we go and that's how it looks like so yeah, there he is with his sword Oh, it fell out. Yeah, it's fine. And you can even put his arm back like this for like a grabbing the sword from the sheath kind of pose. There's that much 
variety you have. But yeah, it is a good looking figure overall, and I do like the arms that came with it, I appreciate it a lot. So you can make a cool pose like this with the wave, with the slash. See that's how the outstretched arm would look like with his uh, his slash coming up on his sword, it looks very open. It's pretty heavy too, so uh, be careful because this thing will add a little bit of weight to your sword, it might pop out. So the way you put it in is you actually slide the sword into the wave. And yeah, that's how you do it. As you can see, there's like a wave for it to be secured. And it just slides in and out, like that. But yeah, this is a, it's a little extra. I kind of just like him holding the sword. So here is another arm that I mixed and matched. As you can see, there's different kinds of shoulders and different kinds of arms and different kinds of hands. So if I want a different hand, I can just pop that out and uh, take that closed fist and use that in his arm, make an outstretched fist. Or I can make something else, you know, you could pop out a lot of different pieces. And there's all these different arms and hands and he even has this luminary symbol on it. Well, that's, uh, that's about it, really. But I want to show you one more thing. I want to show you how to swap his faceplate. Now, his faceplate, to do that, you need to pop out his hair first, the front of his hair, and then you just get the faceplate out like that. It's very easy, comes out very easily, and the next faceplate goes in just, just as easy. It's, it doesn't click or anything, it just slides right in. And then after you get that in, you just want to put the hair back on, and he looks totally fine, looks natural. He's got that that smug grin on his face, a little bit, a little bit of smile. Yeah, it looks good. So there it is, the, the Luminary Nendroid. It looks very good, it's a very fun figure to have. I'm actually very happy with this. I, it was a little bit cheaper than the Bring Arts, and I think it's overall a better figure to have. It's uh, definitely good for Dragon Quest XI fans to own. I absolutely do recommend this figure. It's not, you know, it's not too crazy the price or anything like that. And it has a lot of different accessories and a lot of different, different arms, different face plates, and even a different leg if you want to try that. But yeah, it's a good figure don't have any complaints honestly I had some complaints about the bring arts but uh, this one not not so much I think it's, it's they did a decent job on this one so here he is next to some other luminary figures he is next to the luminary bring arts and the luminary amiibo he is about he's a little bit taller than the amiibo and he's about um, three quarters of the way up the bring arts figure and he's a lot better than the Bring Arts, if you ask me. The Bring Arts, I was a little bit disappointed by because of its high price point, and you know the lack of lack of a lot of accessories. Yeah, he only had like he didn't have any face plates or anything. It was just kind of a very basic action figure for a very high price. While the Android is a lot more modestly priced, and I think it actually looks a lot better. It's more detailed and it just feels higher quality. Uh, the Amiibos are right too. But, you know, you're getting what you pay for. Amiibo's like, what, 15 bucks? It's a decent figure. But out of these three, I do think that the Nendroid is probably the best and probably the one you should go with if you want to have some sort of Dragon Quest XI Luminary figure. The Nendroid's the best of the bunch. It just looks so good. It looks very iconic. And it's just a very cool thing to have on your desk, you know? But they're all nice. But the Nendroid, definitely the best. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this little review of the Luminary an android figure with all his accessories and the slime it's a uh, absolutely a very cool figure i like it a lot i don't think it was a waste of money i think i thought it was very good for the value you're getting and i would definitely recommend this so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys next time